Hi, my name is Professor Fink, and this is our short video lecture review on Parkinson's disease and its treatment. Uh, let's take a look at uh, the lecture outline that you can see below. So uh, in terms of uh, Parkinson's disease, uh, the vast majority of individuals develop this over the age of 50. Uh, and even 60 years of age. It's very uncommon in younger, men, uh, younger individuals. It is, however, one and a half times more common in males than females. And there does seem to be a, a significant uh, genetic component to the development of uh, Parkinson's disease. Uh, Parkinson's disease, under characteristics, is a progressive degenerative disease involving the basal nuclei which is located in the midbrain of the brain. Uh, it is, one of the features is a buildup of an abnormal protein in the synaptic knobs of some of the neurons in the basal nuclei. The characteristic appearance of an individual uh, with uh, Parkinson's symptoms is uh, their body is stiff and unsteady. They exhibit small shuffling steps as they walk. They are often stooped in posture. They may have difficulty in balancing and uh, they have difficulty in sequentially tapping their fingers on a table or moving their fingers uh, quickly in an ordered way. Uh, their face tends to lack expression and animation and uh, they commonly will exhibit resting tremors, uh, which uh, it, it may involve different parts of the body and in the case of the hands, kind of like a pill rolling action of the uh, hands. Uh, this is known as dyskinesia. It can be exhibited in the hand or the foot or the jaw or elsewhere in the body or all of those. Uh, while Parkinson's is primarily associated with a skeletal muscular movement uh, disorders, uh, there can also be uh, or is typically mood and cognitive symptoms, including apathy, depression, uh, sleep behavior disorders, <clears throat> a loss of sense of smell, and cognitive or thinking impairment. Now, the fundamental problem with uh, Parkinson's is there is a decreased release of dopamine, uh, a neurotransmitter released by uh, neurons in the midbrain, and that's what's causing the decrease in skeletal muscular coordination and uh, also the alteration in emotions. Now, because the fundamental problem is decreased release of dopamine, treatment is primarily aimed at uh, raising the dopamine levels uh, in the brain. So the most common uh, combination of drugs that are given to people with Parkinson's is levodopa or L-dopa combined with carbidopa and together, these two uh, raise the dopamine levels in the brain and uh, in the hope that that reduces the uh, skeletal muscular uh, dysfunction, uh, the uh, motor abnormalities. Uh, the adverse effects associated with taking uh, this uh, dopa uh, to raise the dopamine levels uh, include orthostatic or postural hypotension. Uh, so the patient tends to uh, become faint quite easily if they go from a reclining to an upright position quickly. Uh, and nausea uh, is a common symptom as well. Now, sometimes uh, L-dopa with car carbidopa is uh, given in conjunction with uh, a drug called entacapone, uh, which uh, uh, is, uh, inhibits an enzyme that breaks down dopamine to uh, increase the effectiveness of taking the dopamine. Sometimes it's combined with amantadine, which also seems to release or increase the dopamine response. Uh, after five years of taking L-dopa, 40%, almost half the patients, experience a wearing off of effect, the diminishing of its effectiveness. Another approach to uh, increasing the amount of dopamine uh, in the brain is to uh, give what are called dopamine agonists. Uh, these are drugs that mimic the action of dopamine. They activate the dopaminergic receptor sites. Uh, and uh, an example is ropinirole, goes under a brand name Requip. Uh, it is less effective than taking uh, L-dopa in controlling these motor symptoms, 
but may have fewer adverse effects. It is usually uh, given to people more with advanced Parkinson's disease than at the early stages. Side effects include somnolence or drowsiness, impulse control disorders. There's some other products that are similar to Replanarol uh, in similarly activating the dopamine receptor sites. In addition, uh, drugs uh, are, are sometimes given uh, in conjunction with uh, the dopamine agonist or L-DOPA uh, to inhibit the breakdown of dopamine and raise those dopamine levels in the brain. Uh, the two major enzymes that normally break down dopamine are MAO monoamine oxidase and COMT, catechol-O-methyltransferase. So there are uh, both MAO inhibitors, including selegiline uh, and uh, resagiline, uh, and there is uh, catechol-methyltransferase inhibitors, such as tolcapone. Tol 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 uh, tol uh, and, uh, but again, it's usually uh, given in more advanced uh, stages of Parkinson's uh, to counter the wearing off effect of giving uh, the L-DOPA alone. Uh, a surgical approach is sometimes used uh, in more advanced stages of Parkinson's called deep brain stimulation, uh, which is, involves an electrical stimulator to stimulate uh, certain parts of that midbrain uh, to improve motor function. Uh, other drugs are sometimes given to uh, treat or control non-motor uh, uh, side effects of uh, Parkinson's uh, disease, uh, and uh, we've listed them here. In summarizing, in terms of the relevance to oral health, people with uh, Parkinson's disease uh, may have symptoms of abnormal face and tongue muscle function. Uh, they uh, they may exhibit apathy, depression, forgetfulness, which makes or, uh, maintaining oral, good oral uh, self-care difficult. Uh, Parkinson's disease may be associated with dysphagia or difficulty in swallowing, burning mouth pain, uh, pain and dysgeusia, uh, abnormal taste or loss of taste. Uh, patients who have been taking uh, L-DOPA for several years may develop, again, dyskinesia, uncontrolled voluntary movement, which may make accessing the patient's mouth difficult. And uh, finally, patients with Parkinson's disease uh, may have difficulty in verbalizing uh, uh, discomfort and dental pain. Uh, on the next page, uh, we've given, uh, we've provided a patient assessment where uh, you could use this inventory to evaluate uh, the ability, the uh, uh, problems, the level of the severity of their Parkinson's disease and uh, how to best uh, address their oral health. That concludes uh, our brief review of Parkinson's disease and the medications that are used to uh, manage it. Uh, and we'll see you in the next video.